Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. And what do you know it? Today is Groundhog's Day. That's right. I just got up at 6 o'clock in the morning on my alarm clock while blasting to the song I Got You Babe by Sonny and Cher. And I smashed it to pieces all the way to, until I was yawning all the way. Trying to feel fresh to go on a <laughs> on a wonderful Groundhog's Day celebration with my family, so I get to meet a groundhog named Joseph. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, we don't usually celebrate Groundhog's Day anyway, so. But that's pretty much how I'm gonna felt if I end up getting stuck in an actual Groundhog's Day. That's a time warp, so that means I'm gonna be. You know, we're living the same day over and over and over again. And when you know it, I'll probably end up doing some crazy antics such as committing suicide by <laughs> by jumping off a three-story building, getting run over by a truck, you know, electrocuted myself with a toaster inside the bathtub, <laughs> and many others that follow until I wound up waking up in my same bedroom with the same alarm clock and everything that's been going on. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how uh, TV meteorologist Phil Connors had been feeling a lot during that one particular day in the movie Groundhog's Day, which stars Bill Murray, Annie McDowell, Chris Elliott, Stephen Tabowski, Brian Dole Murray, Angela Patton, Rita Cummin, Rip Overton, Robert Duke, and a cameo appearance by Harold Ramis, who is also the writer of this movie and director. And God rest his soul. Oh, and by the way, uh, this DVD that I got is a special edition uh, that came out in 2002 and only has. Uh, some extras, but not too many. I know there's already a 15th anniversary edition of the same movie that has plenty of extras. They also have it on Blu-ray as well, so maybe if I get a chance, I'll probably look for the Blu-ray and buy that one so I can have all the extras and an HD print of this movie because it'll be awesome. Now, I'm definitely going to keep this DVD because I love this movie so much. You, you never get tired of it. So, yeah. The movie begins on February 1st. TV meteorologist Phil Connors, along with news producer Rita Hansen, and cameraman Larry, all played by Bill Murray, Annie McDowell, and Chris Elliott, had worked together as a team from the Pittsburgh television station WPBH TV Channel 9 to travel down to Punxsutawney. Pennsylvania to cover an annual Groundhog's Day festival. But of course, so they're very, you know, excited about this uh, report. Unfortunately, Phil himself didn't, didn't like the idea of the assignment, so that's until when February 2nd came along, that's on Groundhog's Day. Yeah, he wants to um, grudgingly gives his report on the festivals all the way around so then he gets his team on the road back to Pittsburgh but that is until a blizzard had shut down all their travel so the team itself had to be forced to return to Punk Sucks Tony and stay another night but that is until for some reason Phil wants up getting stuck in a time warp so that means now he's actually woken up already reliving the same day over and over and over and over again so it's playing exactly how it played out what seems to be yesterday or which most likely would rather be pretty much today <laughs> he goes around getting up in the morning you know while the song I got you babe is played on the alarm clock you know with radio DJs you know saying it's Groundhog's Day <laughs> you know, out loud and Checking on the window to see what's going on. A lot of people around. And 
you know, getting ready and then you know, washing his face and you know, getting dressed and all this other stuff. Yeah, going going over there for the report. Well, of course, he had met uh, a guy named <laughs> Ned, an annoying Fred who's played by Stephen Poplowski. <laughs> yeah. And then, yep, once again, there's, they're still doing the report, and what he didn't realize is that, he, is that he tries to, to talk to Rita and everybody about this day that's happening. Well, he tries to explain to Rita about what was happening uh, during this particular day, except he's, he's so confused that no one would actually believe in the story. So, when the phenomenon starts to continue on subsequent days, he decided to take advantage of the situation with no fear of long-term consequences. Basically what he's doing is that he's learning all the secrets from the town residents, seducing women, stealing money, drives recklessly, and even gets thrown in jail. Of course, even he tries his ways to, to attempt to get closer to Rita, and he tries to become more attractive to her until it started to fail completely. <laughs> So if that didn't work, you know, he started doing all these suicide tactics by, you know, going around, you know, getting shot, stabbed, <laughs> you know, jump off from a tall building, getting run over by a truck, and even <laughs> kidnaps uh, Phil, the groundhog, you know, from, and, and drive all the way until they both land in their deaths. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so I he thought maybe the the one solution that could probably solve their problems since pretty much nothing has changed. And I know he's been he's been of course you know <laughs> smashing the alarm clock of, of the same song being played over and over again. Yeah. He tries to explain the situation to Rita about this day. She spends the day with him and into the early morning hours. So. But of course, they fall asleep together, and, and he is awaking again, stuck in the time loop once again, to inspire her positive outlook. So Phil endeavors to improve himself. He begins to use his his by now best experience on the day to help many people around the town as possible. You know, he's using the time to learn among other things. You know, how to play the piano, sculpt ice, even speak French, and do all his other, you know. A lot of great fun activities, so maybe this will probably help go back to to another to that right day, you know, exactly how it's supposed to be. So now Phil has been able to befriend almost everyone he meets during the day, so he's using experiments to save lives, helps townspeople, and all to mainly get closer to Rita while the effort of manipulation and sometimes to fight his early attempts at winning her affection. So he had to craft the report on Groundhog Day celebration, so it becomes, you know, one of the biggest moments of his life. So it doesn't end up, you know, getting stuck in that particular day over and over again. So finally, when all of this had worked, you know, he gets to have a town evening dance with Rita, you know, and, and be able to uh, to do all this stuff, and then. And he finally gets to stay with Rita at his own room, you know, until they woke, he woke up in the next morning and finding out that the time loop is now broken. So now it's February 3rd, which I can't wait for that day to finally come. It's on Tuesday, by the way. And now Rita is still with him and they walk outside together. The girl proposes that they move there by renting initially <laughs> or so. And the movie ends. So that's exactly how the film is about. And it's really it's it's a fun movie that you would love to watch over and over and over and over and over again. That's that's the beauty about this movie. I mean I I, I really enjoy the humor that they were going for. I mean considering that this is a PG rated film, they they had a lot of that that were going for it. That that was just hilarious. I just love how <laughs> You know, Beryl Murray, you know, just couldn't stand having to live the same day over and over and over again. He's just doing all these strange, uh, crazy antics and all that. Just to escape this particular day. 
and hopefully everything will turn out for the better, if not for the worse. But I, I like the scene when when he was in the restaurant and he was explaining to Rita, you know, and it was played by Andy Medell, that that he's a god, but he's not the god, <laughs> so to speak. And here's one of my favorite lines in this movie. I didn't survive a car wreck. I wasn't just born yesterday. I've been stabbed, shot, poisoned, frozen, electrocuted, and burned. I'm an immortal. <laughs> now you know how he feels. I mean, he's, he's definitely, you know, going through a lot of crap, you know, throughout this one particular day. And it just, it, it, and it just keeps happening every time that he tries. I mean, he tries to escape it, and he couldn't, no matter what he does. But I guess the only thing that he could try to get rid of this particular day is having to do a lot of changes in his life instead of being all grumpy and moody and, and all that. He just finally gets to become, you know... <laughs> You know, a nice change of pace, you know, become a nice man again and be able to fix everything that needed to be solved. And then finally, the time loop is broken. Maybe this is sort of a, a piece for his life so now he can finally escape it. So he won't deal with it anymore. So he can get on with his own life. Maybe be with Rita and everything will be possible. Yeah, but Bill Murray was hilarious in this movie and I always love him no matter what. And it was great that, you know, he got to do a film once again with Harold Ramis. You know. And since, you know, he was doing Ghostbusters and that's, you know, one of the sequel and, of course, Stripes. You know, they, they were great. To it. And it, it was nice to see Harold Ramis, you know, have a nice cameo in the film, you know, playing his uh, doctor. And, you know, it was great to see. Even though it was only a short cameo, I, I thought it was interesting to see him. Thing that he wrote and directed this movie. Um, Annie Madero, without a doubt, you know, she's a sweet actress. You know, she's been in several movies, and everything from from Great Stroke, you know, the movie about Tarzan, which was played by Christopher Lambert, to uh, Sex Lies and Videotape, you know, that that film with, with James Spader, Rosandria Como, and, and Peter Gallagher. So yeah. But everybody in this movie was great. E even Chris Elliott, you know, who's who's been fresh from his uh, TV show Get Alive, which was on Fox. A uh, very good show, by the way. And in fact, they even have Brian Dole Murray in this movie as well, which happens to be Bill Murray's older brother. In fact, both of them were on the show in, in the later seasons. So that was interesting that they're both in the same movie. Yeah. Because, of course, Chris Elliott's been playing, you know, a lot of stuff in, in several comedies. But he's always been no best known for his, uh, for his comic, for his comic role on, on Late Night with David Letterman, you know, back in the 80s. Yeah. That's where he got a start before he became you know, very popular. You know, back in the 90s and 2000s and all. And he's still great. You know, I, I always loved him in movies like, uh, which I have already on, on the back, on the yellow. Um, Cabin Boy. <laughs> yeah, which also David Letterman had a cameo appearance in. And uh, everybody else was was great. You know, I, I, I love Stephen Toblowski, you know, playing an annoying character named Ned. And I remember that one scene where, <laughs> where he, he keeps saying, Phil? Phil? And then... <laughs> And then, of course, uh, <laughs> Bill Murray's character. And then, of course, Bill just says this. Ned! <laughs> they punch him in the face. <laughs> and, of course, there was a scene where he's where he actually walks inside a, into a huge puddle on, on, on the side. And he says, oh, you better watch that step. It's a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was such a funny scene. Uh, yeah, they, there was a lot of funny stuff that they went into. Uh, and in fact, uh, the best moments was when he was drunk, when he had a police 
when they had a chase, you know, all the police were chasing him while he's he was taking, you know, Phil the the groundhog to <laughs> all the way to you know drive off and, and suddenly you know crash into a car wreck and <laughs> yeah, they they both committed suicide and all that. It was, you know, <laughs> um, but I, I always love this movie. I, I remember went to see this film in theaters. Yeah, with, with my father, my mother, my brother, Jason. I, I think you know, my sister probably uh, was staying home, or I think we brought her along. I don't know. I was seven years old when the film came out. I, I later turned eight. And I remember laughing like hell having to see this movie. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I've been a huge Bill Murray fan ever since. You know, I watch all of his funny movies, you know, everything about meatballs. The Stripes, The Ghostbusters, you know, hell, even What About Bob, and, and all the other ones that follow. You know. <laughs> and of course, uh, you know, movies like, besides this movie, of course, we, we even get uh, you know, The Man Who Knew Too Little, and as well as Kingpin, and uh, Larger Than Life. I, I thought they were very underrated films that he did. I mean, not not in the league of films like Stripes and Ghostbusters and all that, but still. Oh yeah, and of course, you know, Scrooge, you know, which I also enjoy. Yeah, where he plays a modern day Ebenezer Scrooge, you know, <laughs> getting stuck in, in what seems to be a Christmas Carol type of story that's sort of a modern day way. <laughs> Except he's the uh, the manager of, of a TV station. Yeah. I love that movie too. Yeah. I'll, I'll review that film someday when Christmas comes along. I mean, who knows? I, I keep forgetting, but that's okay. You know, there's a lot of movies to choose from that I need to go on with. So, yeah, be steady, guys. But anyway, I mean, get to this day for it. I, I would recommend this movie even on Groundhog's Day because let's face it, no matter what happens to you. You're always going to get stuck in the same day over and over and over again, and no matter what happens. So definitely check it out. Um, you'll never regret it. So anyway, I give Groundhog's Day a solid over and over and over again. Five stars. Five stars. Five stars. Five stars. Five stars. Okay, okay, let, let's not get that carried away. So I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, hopefully, as long as I'm not staying in the same day over and over and over and over again. Okay? So hopefully you'll see me after this day is over. Okay? Thank you. Bye.